Hi everybody, Sandra here from Create in Spain and today I am going to be using Vectinator. Vectinator is available for the Mac, your phone, your iPhone that is, and your iPad. I'm using my iPad. It is not available for any of the other devices. No Android. Sorry, but that's the way it is. So the reason I'm doing this video on Vectinator is because they have recently done an update. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit because I want to make sure when I edit this I can get the whole iPad in. They have upgraded their trace function. So here on the left hand side you can see I've got a lemon slice. Now this is one that I drew in Procreate. I saved it to my photo roll and I can now open it up with Vectinator. You have the option to click on the plus button here and do an import or just select a new document so you can do your drawing at the time. And I'm just going to allow it to open this one up because I've already imported it. And there we go, there's my picture. Now this is a PNG and as you can see, or at least I hope you can see, it has some airbrushing on it so that they are not all solid lines okay and top right corner you have some tools now the one that we're particularly interested in at this precise moment is this big paintbrush but in order to use this we need to do a couple of things we go to the layers panel it's next to the plus button and as you can see i just have the one layer long press on here and i can duplicate it once I've duplicated it, I'm going to click don't want to see it and lock it. Okay, so I'm now working on the top layer. It's highlighted, so that's the one I'm working on. But as you can see, it's not selected. Now to do a trace on it, you want to go up to this middle bar here and the one that's got a little tick in dotted lines. And a big cross will go against your image, which makes it look quite peculiar, but that tells you that it's ready for tracing. So go to my paintbrush up here on the right hand side, and you can see the auto trace has come up automatically. That's how it works. Now it has two modes. It has photography. I don't need photography on this one. And it has sketch, and that's the one I want. And then you think, well, uh, that, that, that is not doing anything. You just need to click that left arrow and it gets you back to the actual function. And you've got some things that you can alter. Now, mine at the moment is set to a complexity of 40%. I don't think with this particular image, it's going to make too much difference how that is set. What I want to do is set the contrast right the way up. Oops, numbers come up if you want them. But I can set it right the way up and then click Auto Trace. And lo and behold, boom, boom, it's traced. Now I'm going to select it all like this. And down here you can see we've got Fill and Stroke. Now my stroke, for some strange reason, is set to white, so I would prefer that to be a darker color. I'll put it in red, it doesn't make much difference what it is. And I don't want to fill on it. And now, as you can see, particularly if I click off there, I have my image fully traced, all the details are there that I want, and that can be exported as an SVG or a PDF, whichever you wish, and that's a cut file, basically. As you can see, you can't see the actual picture that I started off with, but it's still there because it's in the layers, we just couldn't see it because it was switched off. There you go switch it on or off. So if you want to export this as is, all you've got to do is switch that on, save it and export it, or you can export a particular layer if that's what you want to do. I don't want to do that at the moment. What I want to do is put an offset line around it. And this is where it gets even more interesting for us people who like to cut things. Okay, I'm going to switch that off so we don't see that any longer. And now I have my various lines. So if I tap on this, I've got one of them selected, the outer line. If I go to my brush tool here, I can create a thicker line. So just 
to make it really, really obvious, I'm going to go for a very, very heavy thick line. So if I want to cut the outside of this, at the moment that's not what it's doing because the cut line is going through the centre of it. What I need to do is to go to this Boolean path type gizmo in the middle on the right hand side and go to outline. You need to have it selected and you will see that there are two lines here, at least hopefully you will. Let me just take the colour out of this. There we go. You can see now there are two lines. Instead of the one line that was going through the centre of this, there are now the two. So we have our outer cut line. If I go here and I switch my image back on, you can see that that outer cut line is way further out. All right. So we have what we actually want except for the fact that we want to take away the other lines. So what we can do is go on to the arrow on the left hand side of this and we can see all our individual lines here. We can either tap on them in here and get rid of them using the dustbin or we can select them from here and throw them away, whichever it is that we want to do. Once you have your outline done, there's a cut line there and there's a cut line there, you want to click on separate and that separates them all out for you. If I now go to the whole lot and I take the fill off, that's the only thing that confuses me. Sometimes it puts a fill in there when I didn't think I was adding one, but you know, that's a minor thing. So I have an inside line and I have an outside line and then of course I can just throw away whatever bits that I do not want and just leave me with that outer bit because that's all I wanted in the first place. Thanks for watching. See you soon.